The following content is for entertainment purposes only. All of the voices in this video and this disclaimer were generated using artificial intelligence and are not actual quotes of the persons depicted. This content is purely satirical and is in no way a political advertisement or contains any political bias. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of President's Play Pokemon Crystal Randomizer Nuzlocke. I know normally whoever is playing is supposed to do the intro, but after that debate last week, I feel like I should do this to prevent even more harm to the American people. If you haven't watched episode 18 yet, there are spoilers ahead, so I'll give you five seconds to stop this video and go watch that episode before you proceed. Okay, great. Now that you're caught up, we can proceed. You can't pull a George and get mad at me for talking about previous events. And speaking of George, that's what we need to talk about. After his comments towards the end of episode 18, I had to sit down and spoke with him. He wanted everyone to know that he apologizes for his comments and he let the anger of letting Shendu faint get the best of him. Because of those comments, he has decided to take one episode off this series and give Joe some space. Personally, I think it was a smart idea and I respect the fact he feels bad about his actions. With that out of the way, we can proceed to the rest of the episode. How are you fellows doing today? I respect that decision as well, and I'll be man enough to forgive him. I can't deny what he said really got to me, though. I was crying in the broom closet with my good friends Captain Morgan and Johnny Walker until Kamala told me I had to fly to Atlanta for the debate. I'll never do another debate in that state again. I had to watch a replay of it, and I thought it was AI generated with how many pauses I took. I'm not sure if you heard me as you ran out of the Oval Office last week, but I did give you the opportunity to postpone the debate. But I was wondering why you smelled like a brewery on that stage and needed help getting down that step to the moderators after it was over. I have to give you credit, though, to do as well as you did with the blood alcohol content, with what I assume was five times the legal limit seeing your 100 pounds soaking wet. You actually strung together two or three complete sentences. It was pretty impressive. Oh shit, you really gave me that opportunity. I would have taken that in a heartbeat and just cried all night with my stuffed animals, Mr. Fluffers and Tippidus. Tippidus. What kind of a name is that for a stuffed animal? Tippidus Dick. Oh man, I got you, Obama. You see, America, I'm not some old man on the cusp of death. I can speak fluently, elegantly, and stun all over these hoes in my path. Ignore that debate performance because this is the real me and definitely not an AI-generated version of me. Your Presidential Medal of Freedom is hereby revoked. I did that as a make-a-wish type gesture to your senile ass. You just played Angry Birds on my couch while I was doing work for eight years. Not sure you can call him senile after he just got you with a tip of this Obama. You're just gonna have to hold the L with this one. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I will just be quiet right now and not tell Joe about what my plan for this episode was. It was going to be a great surprise as well. A surprise? For me? Oh boy, Obama, tell me, tell me. Is it an ice cream party? Did you give me an ice cream party to cheer me up? Please just tell me. You know I was going to not tell you and call everything off after that joke, but I can't just deny those withered, decrepit eyes. Oh, all right, Joe, my surprise is that I planned for us today to have a makeup debate during the episode since last week's events prevented you from being your best. I even hired a moderator to do the debate for us, and Donald agreed to everything in advance. I would have preferred the ice cream, but that's not a bad idea either. You mean I'm going to get the chance to show America that I'm not some old man that needs to be medicated to even have the appearance of a man on his deathbed? This is great. I'm going to run that election win back for sure. Oh, that's sweet. Joe thinks he actually has a chance. But yes, Joe, given the circumstances, I've agreed for us to have a debate and to ensure this channel doesn't get taken down over politics, we're going to make all the topics related to Pokemon. The only thing is, I didn't realize you had hired a moderator, Obama. I thought you were going to moderate the debate yourself. Who did you hire? Well, keep in mind that you're broke from lawyer fees. I already spent my allowance from Michelle this month on Weiss Schwartz trading cards, and Jill hasn't let Biden touch money since my second term. So we didn't exactly have the highest budget here. He's actually waiting outside right now. You can come on in. The chair was so comfortable outside, I wish you didn't call me in right here. I haven't even had a chair since before I went to Mount Moon. No, absolutely not. Obama, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Out of all the people in the world, this is who you choose. I take back my agreement to do this debate. This is not happening. Oh, come on, Donald. It's your old buddy, Tucker. We've had such good times together. Don't you remember all those times I propped you up on my show? And that time we walked through Mount Moon together. 
Those were the days of my right. Oh shit, it's the waiter from the boat. He finally brought my eggs here. I knew they were on their way. One second, Mr. Waiter Man, I just need to catch this encounter. Well, it's not much, but at the same time, it's something, and we need to restock the team a little after last week. Just catch this, and we can move on, Joe. Somehow this is your fucking fault, Tucker. Joe hasn't made a single mistake during this entire run, and now he just let one of his encounters this episode faint. I bet he was just thinking about eggs and was rushing. Get the fuck out of here, Tucker. Speaking of those eggs, I'll take them right now, please. You can put them right on top of those buttons. I don't know what they do anyway. Joe, you dementia patient. I don't have any eggs. And before you say it, I'm not a waiter or a janitor or a cave dweller and unfortunately not a junior safari zone ranger anymore. I'm a journalist who's trying to rebuild his shattered career on Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called now. And today, I'm the moderator for your debate. Yeah, this bozo's definitely not getting a tip. Barack, there seriously isn't anyone else who can moderate this debate. So the other candidates that had any interest in doing this were Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Hillary Clinton, and Mike Pence. If you guys want me to call any of those three and just let me know when I can. Tucker. I know this isn't something you're used to hearing and haven't heard in a long time, but you got the job. Even a lapdog to Putin like you that kept us prisoners in Moscow is better than any of those three. Thank you so much, Donald. I know you won't regret it. It's only right also because I was in episode 19 of your last series as well. Maybe we can make this a regular occurrence. Wait, you were? Well, how about that? He's right. Guys, can you believe episode 19 was the final episode of Yellow? It's incredible to think today would have been the last day of this game in the last series, and now we're not even halfway done with Crystal. I didn't even think we were going to make it to this episode, seeing how Bush was playing last week. It's a miracle we even made it out of the radio tower. But I've been itching to get this debate started. Take it away, Mr. Cave Dweller. Joe, for the last time, I am not a cave dweller. And when this debate begins, I will mute your microphone if you even mention that again. But hello, everybody, and welcome to the redo of the first debate for the 2024 presidential election. I am your moderator, Tucker Carlson, and today on YouTube, we will ask the questions that all of you undecided voters are anxious to hear. Without further ado, I will introduce our candidates for today. First off, he's the current and 46th president of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. I'm the man. I beat Orange Guy once and I'm going to do it again. Build back better baby. You built one hell of a nuclear bomb that you dropped on our economy, that's for sure. Donald, please wait until I introduce you before you speak. Ahem, where was I? And introducing next, his challenger, the 45th and former president of the United States of America, Donald John Trump. You know him, you love him, you can't live without him. Make compatible great again. Four more amazing years. I'm sure this won't be an absolute shit show that gets us taken down from YouTube. Maybe episode 19 will actually be our last episode for Crystal 2 after this. I ask the audience to please hold all of their comments until the end. Now, before we begin, I would like to tell the viewers and remind our candidates of the rules. Each candidate will be given an opportunity to answer each question on an alternating basis. The candidate who doesn't begin will get the final word on each subject matter. When it is not your turn, your microphone will be muted and nothing you say will be heard. President Biden won the coin toss I just did on my phone, and we'll get this started. Gentlemen, I wish you the best of luck today. Wow, Joe rigged the coin toss as well. All right, I can see how this. I'm glad to see the mute button is working as intended. Anyway, let us begin, and our first question goes to President Biden. The topic is, the pokey economy. What the hell is that, Barack? Do you want to get paid? Just read the damn script. Yeah, I really need money. Anyway, getting back to the topic of the pokey economy. Mr. President, inflation has slowed, but prices remain high. Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of pokey balls that cost $1,000 then, now costs more than $1,200, and typical potion prices have jumped more than 30%. What do you say to voters who feel they are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump? You have to take a look at what I was left when I became president, what Mr. Trump left me, we had an economy that was in free fall. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems. And we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of healing items. We're going to make sure we build two million new full restores. We're going to make sure we cap prices so trainers don't have to carry 99 lemonades. And we're going to make that available to everybody, to all trainers. So we're working to bring down the prices at your local Pokemart. And that's what we're going to get done. Thank you. Former President Trump, your response. 
We had the greatest economy in the history of our region. We had never done so well. Everybody was amazed by it. Other regions were copying us. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that pokey rust mess. He created new competitive rules. That was a disaster for our region. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job. And inflation's killing our region. It is absolutely killing us. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks it was great. He had the greatest economy in the world. He rewarded the wealthy. He had the largest tax cut in Cantonian history, two trillion. He raised the deficit larger than any president has in any one term. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who has lost more jobs than he had when he began. In lieu of a response to his nonsense, I'd just like you all to see how he handles this puzzle. Pokey economy is going to slide downwards even more than he's going to slide around in this cave until the end of time. Oh yeah? Watch this, one plus three is six, carry the 12, and then spin around, stop, pull the pie out of the oven, and bing, bang, boom, we're out of here. Joe, you literally couldn't navigate the simple puzzle in Price's Gym. How the hell did you just navigate a puzzle that made kids quit the game in less than 60 seconds? Also, what was that math you just thought you did? Elementary, my dear Obama. Now watch me catch this false god as our encounter in this cave. Wait, what the fuck, it fled? It can't do that, that's cheating. I get another encounter. I actually don't know the rules on this off the top of my head. I'm going to say no, since it was technically the first Pokemon we ran into. We don't need a third of the nation of Ireland yelling at us like when we caught battery in the rocket hideout. Obama makes a good point. You didn't do anything wrong, Joe, just some bad luck that time. Excuse me, but I think we're all forgetting about the debate. Let's get back on track here. And the next question goes to you, former President Trump. The topic is Pokemon eggs. This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Plateau overturned Ditto v. Day, care man. This morning, the Plateau ruled on yet another Pokemon egg case, temporarily allowing deletion of eggs to continue in Lavender Town despite their restrictive ban. Former President Trump, you take credit for the decision to overturn Ditto v. Day, care man. As president, would you block the deletion of eggs? If you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex, 51 years ago, you had Ditto v. Daycare Man. Now, 10 years ago or so, they started talking about how many steps and how many of this getting into other things. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a Pokemon when it's making sounds. It's about to hatch. 10 steps before it hatches, and even after it hatches, if you look at the former governor of Vermilion, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the Pokemon aside and we'll determine what we do with the Pokemon, meaning we'll release the Pokemon. It's been a terrible thing what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Ditto when it was decided. Supported Ditto. And I was, that's this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. But here's the deal, there's a lot of young Pokemon who are being sent to daycare centers to produce eggs against their will as their trainer just wants perfect effort values. And they can do nothing about it and they try to arrest them when they cross town lines. So that means he can take the life of the Pokemon in the final 100 steps and even after birth, because some towns, Democrat-run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Vermilion, put the Pokemon down. Then we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the Pokemon in the final cycle and unalive the Pokemon. He's lying. That is simply not true. We are not for late cycle egg deletion, period, period, period. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, constitutional scholarship said it was the right way to go. 51 years. And it was taken away because this guy put very conservative members on the Supreme Plateau. Takes credit for taking it away. I can't put my finger on it, but this seems so close to the debate you guys had the first time, except you two can speak much more coherently and aren't changing the subject so much. Yeah, it's definitely just you, Barack. I mean, these questions you're having me ask are in no way related to real life topics and not their exact answers with slight changes to accommodate a Pokemon video. But I will say the candidates have shown much more life than last Thursday, and this is definitely heating up. Getting tired, sleepy Joe? Maybe you want to call it quits and take your fourth nap of the day. I took my fourth nap hours ago, bro. Next one today will be my sixth but I'm just getting warmed up. You made a mistake giving me this second chance and I'm going to prove to the viewers that I'm the right man to get this second term and not you.
Well, if that's the case, I say we jump right into our rapid fire segment. For this segment, the voters will get to see how the candidates answer donations. You will alternate going back to back with no rebuttals allowed. There were eight donations in this past episode, so you will each get four of them. We'll leave with you again, President Biden. The first donation came from Legendary Gamer, and he responded to the common question by saying Joe would be brave, Barack would be hardy, Bush gets naughty, and Trumps would be adamant. Also, Bush played poorly. Thank you for this fine answer to the common question and the donation as well, Legendary. People like you make this channel great. I agree that I would be brave, but Trump would be the naughty one seeing his recent court ruling. Former President Trump, what do you have to say to MMA lover 150 who details the, and I quote, massive fucking coping from Bush? He goes on to praise Obama for turning his gameplay around without excuses, and Bush went the personal attack route. It was very pathetic overall. I was incredibly appalled by George's behavior. Ever since we started hanging out, he had cemented himself as the wholesome one of the group. But the events of last week are something I thought George was never capable of. I am a firm believer in second chances, however. I believe his apology and willingness to distance himself this session prove his good intentions, and I believe he will only come back not just a better friend, but a better trainer as well. Thank you for the donation. Next up, we have Ram 420 M6. He said the reckless play was working until George lost Dragonite and Trump lost Hound Doom. For natures, he didn't just mention the nature, but also a reason why as well. But what do you have to say about Ram saying you are lonely since you don't have Dark Brand and President Biden? Wait, that's why Cerberus isn't in the party right now. Obama, you told me we deposited her to not feel like we had to level her up with the rest of the team. Thanks for your honesty, buddy. But Ram, I could never say I am lonely. I am surrounded by the best friends a man could ask for and an amazing community on YouTube. Dark Brandon might Holy be recovering, shit, but he will this be back. Stupid debate. Everyone look, it's compatible. Biden, we have to catch it. Wait, don't run away, you goddamn mummy. I take back everything I said, and we should get a second chance since the false god fled from the encounter earlier. Find another one? That is an order, Joseph. Sorry I lied to you about Cerberus, Joe. We were going to keep that one a secret since Donnie was just thrown into the episode without warning and emotions were already sky high. But Donald, I know it was compatible, but we made a decision as a group, and we must stick to it. I'm That's sorry, bullshit, but we can't Barack. catch Barack. Now I know you truly hated compatible. You unalive my pride and joy on purpose, and you're so against getting another one. I will remember this when I'm president again, mark my words. You're getting so thrown over the wall. In fact, I might even mix you in the cement that builds the wall. Now, Donald, let's not say anything the voters might not approve of. It's your turn to answer the next donation as well. It came from Lazy Panda 6569 who said the most recent episode took a dark turn quick. And these issues need to be resolved immediately. What do you also think about the natures he gave to each of you? Oh shit, we just got outrage? I know a certain Pokemon that could have been amazing on. But getting back to the topic at hand, this is one of the most base donations I've ever seen. You bet your ass I'm brave and can deal out the heavy hits. Biden is the poster child for not being bright. Obama is mild without the Ellen George, despite his actions, is still the most neutral at the end of the day. Oh, blow me, Trump. And he also called you slow, so that part is definitely based. I ask again that the audience please holds all questions until the end of the debate. We're halfway through with this rapid fire round, and we're back to President Biden with another donation from Ram, this time via Kofa. He's still trying to get his head straight after that crazy episode last week, but what do you say to him about concerns the team isn't leveled up highly enough? That's a bunch of malarkey. Back in my day, you could go into the Elite Four with Pokemon 20 levels lower than the champion and still come out unscathed. The calls that our team is too underleveled are not only inaccurate, but hurtful to the members of this team. Mystery, Polyrath, Arcanine, and Me Too are an unstoppable force, and they will never be defeated. Sorry to interrupt again, but Joe, he does have a point. This next gym, we're going to be facing trainers with Pokemon in the mid-30s and a gym leader with three level 37s and a 40. We probably should have been battling all of these wild Pokemon in the cave for experience instead of running from them. Mad cause bad, skill issue, get good, learn how to play the game, and you won't have any issues, Obama. Not sure if Obama will be able to recover after that Gen Z toxic combo, but former President Trump, your next donation comes from, yeah, you're right, who understands why things got heated, but what do you think about his idea for Joe and Bush to handle their squabble in Showdown? I have a username you can use if you need one. Definitely going to pass on any username you have, Tucker, but my administration would fully support the system of showdown battles to handle all disputes. 
You name it, domestic disputes, gaming fights, everything you can think of will be handled by Showdown Battles. Thank you for the donation and great comments. As always, yeah, you're right. Final donation for each of you, President Biden, you get to deal with presidential gaming drive. He says that George is the newest fraud and he better not get any of this British people money. Do you agree with his play being more disgraceful than game producer Six's love for Lilligan? Before I answer that question, I'm just going to let you all know I plan to clear some inventory space and actually catch an encounter this episode. I'll do it on Route 45 and Donald, you can take the one in Blackthorn and the Dragon's Den. Now I have to say this, we may disagree with game producer Six Faded Pokemon against Wallace, but Lilligan is a goddess. Every American should be entitled to a thick dummy mommy like Lilligan. We will always agree on that. But yeah, George ain't getting a cent from last episode. Don't worry about that. Thanks again, buddy. And finally, former President Trump, you will get the pinned comment from last episode, which was also from Legendary Gamer. He thinks George should drop the W for an L in his name, hopes Dark Brandon comes back, and jokes aside, hopes Bush can rebound. What do you have to say to that? Thank you again, Legendary, for the 20 bucks in total this past episode. The return of Dark Brandon is something that members of both parties are in agreement on. We yearn for the return of Brandon as he will make this team stronger than it already is. Bush will pull an Obama and turn his play around. You can mark my words on that one. Gentlemen and the two ladies watching this video, we will now move into our closing statements of this debate. Both candidates will get a final chance to address the public and attempt to convince them that they are the proper choice this November. Former President Trump, you have the floor. My fellow Americans, I took two Pokemon League exams. I aced them, both of them, as you know. We made it public, he took none. I'd like to see him take one, just one, a real easy one. Like, go through the first five questions on type matchups, he couldn't do it. I took physical exams every year. And, you know, we knock on wood, wherever we may have wood, that I'm in very good health. I just won two VGC championships at local card stores. Not even in the younger divisions, two regular championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart, and you have to be able to run back and forth to hatch eggs to get perfect effort values. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't go through two towns without taking a nap. He challenged me to a battle. He can't even take down two of my party members. I feel that I'm in as good a shape as I was 25, 30 years ago. Actually, I'm probably a little bit lighter, but I'm in as good a shape as I was years ago. I feel very good. I feel the same. You're going to see he's six foot five and only 225 pounds or 235 pounds. Well, anyway, that's anyway. Just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a Pokemon battle with him. I told you before I'm happy to battle if you carry your own switch. Think you can do it? Let's not act like children. You're a child. And on that incredibly disappointing final segment, that brings us to the conclusion of this debate. I would like to thank both candidates for their time and the audience for actually sitting through this a second time. For everyone here, I'm Tucker Carlson. Have a great 4th of July, and we'll see you next week. Wait, hold on. The episode isn't over yet, Tucker. We've still got this encounter to go. And when did you think you had the authority to end an episode in the first place? You're not a member of this team. Give me a break, Obama. You saw the last episode. George is an absolute liability and needs to be replaced. Let's break down the facts. I'm a crowd favorite from Yellow, and we had perfect chemistry this episode. I say you make the decision to cut George and make old Tucker the fourth member of the team. Sorry, Tucker, but that's gonna be a hard pass. While I have to admit you handled your role as moderator very professionally and the debate went off without a hitch, we're not dropping George for you. We're not going to forget that you helped Putin trap us in Russia. And you can't forget the name of the series as presidents play Pokemon Crystal, not cave dwellers play Pokemon Crystal. So you can't even be considered on those grounds. For the last time, Joe, I am not a cave dweller. That was only a figment of your imagination in the simulation. I have not now, nor have I ever lived in a cave. I won't stand for this injustice any longer. Tucker, if I give you the five bucks I promised you for this episode, and tell you we might consider you to appear in future episodes. Will you leave without us having to call Secret Service? Future considerations? Oh, hell yeah. My negotiation skills are second to none. I'm gonna take this five bucks straight to Taco Bell now that I can finally afford one of their $5 boxes. See you later, guys. So, uh, is anyone going to tell him that box is like seven bucks now? Thanks again for that Biden for screwing up the best deal in fast food. It's not my fault. Taco Bell is a Mexican food store, so they work off Mexico's finances. 
go over there and complain to them yourself. Joe, the headquarters for Taco Bell is in California. Just because it's Mexican-style food doesn't mean they're pulling the strings. Yeah, sure, Barack. What are you going to tell me next? Italy doesn't control the prices of all pizza, and China doesn't control the prices for all Kung Pao chicken. April Fool's Day was three months ago, buddy. I'm not falling for it. It's incredible how your mental aura continues to reach new lows every day, Biden. Now, just do us a favor and catch this fucking ladybug so we can sign off for the day. I was distracted by Tucker originally, but this encounter has lasted over three minutes already. Speed it the hell up, man. What more do you want me to do? It keeps using recover, and I just tried to catch it with an ultra ball while paralyzed. It's got to be the stars messing with my encounters right now. Did you know that Mercury's in lemonade and the moon is in microwave? Never before has someone been cursed by astrology this badly before. Aren't you going to call him stupid or demented for that comment, Donald? Did he say anything incorrect? It sounded exactly the same as the crazy people on Facebook who talk about the stars. I'm sure we definitely didn't just offend any of our viewers. Nice job, guys. But Donald's right, Joe. I don't know if you need to channel that nonsense about the interior of a Pokeball again, because the Ultra Balls you just spent half of our bank account on aren't working, but please catch this before we hit the 30-minute mark of this video. There it goes using Recover again. What a bitch. We would never use that move and especially not have it on arguably our best Pokemon in each of these last two runs. But truth be told, this bug might actually be useful for us. Not only must it have good defense, seeing it tanked a super effective drill peck from me too, but the acid armor belly drum recover combo could prove broken if we get a good move on it. I think about a switch in to a physical attacker, make it so it can't touch us, max out the attack, heal up and sweep. This might be our new secret weapon. Hypothetically, yes, that strategy could prove absolutely broken on a good Pokemon. But Joe, you're forgetting that the mutant ladybug only has 390 base stats. Odds are both of its attacks are in the gutter, and it's slower than molasses. Now, that same move set on a Suicune, and you're in business. Fair enough, but after doing my calculations, I've discovered the problem is that Mystery wasn't our active Pokemon when trying to get this captured. Now that it's in the yellow and paralyzed, this is a guaranteed catch when combined with Mystery. Just watch. Why am I even surprised that logic worked? But with that finally out of the way, that is going to do it for this very eventful episode 19. Hopefully you enjoyed this debate more than the last one, and of course we wish all of you a very happy 4th of July. Make sure to message a British person like Presidential Gaming Drive and laugh at him because he's working today and his country blew a 13 to nothing colony lead. Don't be the idiot that blows your hand off with a firecracker today, and most importantly, have fun. I named it Eternity, seeing how long it took to catch, and we'll check out its stats right now. But while we do that, let's take a moment to shout out our channel members. And if you want to join them, the link to our Kofi, where you can do it, is in the description of this video. Thank you to our newest member, Hector, with a $5 monthly pledge. And of course, thank you to our first and highest monthly pledging member, Bradley. We'll see you next week as Donald tries to earn our eighth badge. Tries? Now, nah, fam, it's going to happen guaranteed. You act like a YouTuber ever fumbled the bag on the eighth gym of a Nuzlocke. Don't forget to join the Discord as we approach 700 members, and we'll see you next week. Hey, how about we sing happy birthday to America since it's 4th of July? Happy birthday Not to you. Not a fucking you. chance happy we're going to Happy birthday to you. Happy Cut birthday, to dear America. Hey, wait a minute. Was there another, another debate? I wasn't invited to. Why didn't anybody tell me I have some great opinions on the...